Many classify the 20th century as the golden era for watchmaking. Not only did it have transformative designs, but there are also many iconic brands that rose to prominence during this period. And as many of these designs and brands remain relevant until this day, some iconic companies had their time run out. What is going on everybody? Teddy Baldessar here. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at three brands that really lost their way after a great run in the 20th century. So guys, let's jump into the video. First, we have a brand that is really special to me for a couple reasons, but one most importantly, because I own the watch and is owned by my great grandfather. And the brand is Wittenauer. Wittenauer is a brand that many modern day watch enthusiasts might not be as familiar with. However, they have a great history. And at the time, they were one of the most respected watchmakers during the 20th century. Albert Wittenauer, a Swiss immigrant who arrived in New York City at the age of 16 years old, was looking for a way to establish a new life in the United States in 1872. During his time working at his brother-in-law's department store, he had the idea to develop a well-crafted watch for the American public and developed his first watch in 1880. Following the creation of the watch and it selling well, Wittenauer was officially founded in 1885. The brand grew to prominence in the early 20th century when the brand would produce watches and components for early aviation units during World War I. One of their most iconic designs, the Wittenauer Allproof, produced in 1918, accompanied many great figures of the 20th century and their adventures. One of the first Allproof models ever produced was for daredevil Jimmy Matter in his attempt in 1933 to fly around the world in his Vega 5B, and by Neil Armstrong during the Gemini 8 mission. In addition, in 1932, Amelia Earhart made her first solo flight across the Atlantic with the Lockheed Vega 5B, equipped with Wittenauer instruments. During this time, Longines and Wittenauer worked together to exchange technologies. This relationship continued to prosper, and in 1950, Longines purchased the company. However, following the Quartz Crisis, this once iconic brand started to fall into turmoil, and after scraping by for decades, in 1995, Swatch essentially put the dagger in the heart of Wittenauer when they purchased Longines and broke the 125-year collaboration between Longines and Wittenauer when taking over the distribution of Longines. Fast forward to today, Wittenauer is sadly a shadow of itself and was purchased by Bulova for only $11.6 million in 2001 and has merely been reduced to a glorified fashion brand. However, their vintage pieces still embody the same value and design forward thinking that founder Albert Wittenauer developed over a century ago. So for our next brand, it follows a very similar story to Wittenauer. However, when you look at their revenue in 2017, yes, they're still around, they eclipse brands of Omega, Patek, and rival that of Rolex. So what's the story behind them? The brand is S. Smiths and & Sons and was founded in Southeast London in 1851. During this time, the shop became well-respected in the city and grew rather rapidly, strangely enough, as a result of their development of instruments for cars and aircrafts. In fact, Smiths helped create instruments that were made to occupy the plane of the first transatlantic flight in 1919, and by World War II, its clock production accounted for half of the UK market. With their economic success following the war, the brand started developing wristwatches in England. The watches started to garner great success during the 40s and 50s, and their deluxe watch accompanied a very iconic explorer during their great adventure. In 1953, Edmund Hillary ascended Mount Everest, and many associate the Rolex Explorer as the only watch that accompanied Hillary on his climb. However, Hillary also carried a Smith's Deluxe during his expedition as well. This helped elevate the brand to the pinnacle of their success. Yet similar to many brands during the 70s and 80s, they struggled amidst the quartz crisis until their watch and clock division ceased to exist by the 1980s. However, the brand continues to succeed as a result of their focus on aerospace and now is known as the Smiths Group. The brand brought in $4.3 billion in revenue in just 2017 alone. And despite the brand's pivot, their watches still can be found for great deals. Watches like the Deluxe, the Everest, and the W10s. And lastly, we have one of my favorite vintage brands, a brand that I would love to be able to say I own one of their watches. Universal Geneve. So when you think of the most coveted vintage watches outside of the major brands, Universal Geneve certainly gets some love in the inner collector's circles. However, their presence in the modern day is essentially non-existent. The brand has proud roots in Switzerland all the way back to 1894. However, the brand grew to mainstream popularity following their move to Geneva in 1918. During this time, Universal Geneve made some great innovations to the industry. In fact, in 1917, they rivaled that of Breitling and Longines to 
create one of the first wristwatch chronographs ever. And as a result of being at the forefront of innovation for chronographs, over the following decades, Universal Geneve became known for creating some of the most beautiful chronographs ever made, primarily their compacts and tri-compacts chronographs. These iconic chronos even competed with many of the leading brands and their chronographs at the time. Brands like Patek, Hoyer, and Breitling. Even President Harry Truman wore a solid gold tri-compacts at the Potsdam Conference in 1945. I highlighted this watch as well as other presidents' watches in my series that I've done on watches of US presidents. If you've not seen those videos, make sure you go check them out on my channel. I'll link them down in the description below as well. In addition to Universal Geneve's chronographs, they were also one of the first watchmakers to experiment with micro rotor automatic watches, releasing their first micro rotor watch, the Pole Router, in 1954. The watch was designed by Gerald Genta, the same man who designed watches like the AP Royal Oak, the Nautilus, the Ingenieur XL, and many others. The 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s were a great time for the brand. However, the turn of the 1970s, similar to the other brands mentioned here on the list, was a hard time. First, the brand was acquired by Bulova, and following the acquisition, the brand struggled to stay true to form. That struggle was only compounded when factoring in the Coors crisis, and after another bad acquisition for the company in the late 1980s by Stilux Holdings International, a Hong Kong-based investment firm, the brand lost nearly its entire identity and was reduced to a shadow of its former self. Fast forward to today, Universal Geneve is essentially a dead brand, sadly. If you go to their Flash website, you'll see updates of the 2009 Basel World, and it kind of really is a sad thing to look at because the brand essentially is completely falling off. And as somebody who truly loves vintage Universal Geneve watches, I really do hope that somebody takes the chance and tries to resurrect this great brand with the hope to reignite what once was. All right guys, so those are three brands that I think really have lost their way. Are there other brands that come to mind when you're thinking about this? There are a lot of brands that have fallen victim to this quartz crisis that I've talked about a lot. So I'd love to see comments down below. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. That all really helps out the channel. Follow me on Instagram, fill out the watch form. We're gonna announce the winner of the Seiko SNK803 on my Instagram, so make sure you're following me there. And then finally, if you wanna support this new generation of watch lovers that we're trying to foster up on this channel, be sure to go to our Patreon. Any support there will be greatly appreciated. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.